Good morning and welcome to Rising Match Day as we look to tonight's game against Oakland Roots. I'm Owen Evans, joined alongside by AZ Central's Edwin Perez. On today's show, Santimo may have taken the crown on Friday night, but the midfield trio also found itself dominating the score sheet. We break down the middle of the park for Phoenix Rising. And all's face making a return with a new team. We chat with Tyler Blackwood about his time here in the desert. And a new side, but what kind of surprise can they pose? We take a look at Oakland. But first, just a week on from Rising's home opener, let's take a look back. San Diego the visitors, both sides meeting for the first time since the real fated clash last September. And it was Rising taking the initiative early on. Dad shot with a few chances, but he couldn't quite find the net, could he, Edwin? No, I, I mean, a lot of players on that team shine in this game and a lot of people put the ball behind the net and, and you expect the number nine to put it put it there as well. But Dadashov had a rough uh, rough game. I mean, there was a few good chances that was saved. And he, as you see in this highlight uh, right there, good fingertip save out. And then at the end, it was easily caught. So tough game for him. Instead, 39th minute, it's Ryan Flood with the rip there. You know, but it's John Bakera ultimately who tucks it away with the instinct there. Well needed after all that they've been through and there was a lot of pressure heading into them. You see in the celebration and the goal how much it means to them, especially Bakera who needs to return to that four and it's going to be important for the team throughout the year. Just a solid finish, right, right timing in right position. Rising weren't done there after the break. It's Santimo cutting inside. Something he did all night. He laid it off for Bakero. Keeper spills it. And it's Moa there to tuck it away. Yeah, I hate to sound like a broken record, but another right position, right time. A rebound goal in it itself. Santi Moore, another key player and key uh, is going to be crucial out the, throughout the year. Set up the play very well, and he was there to get that rebound beautifully finishing to the left. Up at the other end, and it's former rising forward Ben Spencer. He's just come on the pitch. A hint of offside about it? Maybe. But, you know, when you see now in this replay here, both centre-backs, you know, they're caught up there following the ball. Ryan Flood, he's too far away to actually make a difference. And Spencer's able to tuck it away. 2-1. And of course, is the comeback on? It didn't last long if it did. Santimo with a little pass outside to Aiden Quinn. He wasn't going to miss that, was he? He's a San Diego native as well, did you know? Yeah, I mean, one that they took they took one of the rival's best players and he made an impact right away. And he got that goal. Beautiful finish right there in the first non-rebound goal of the night for Rosie. Ten minutes to go and it's Santimo again looking inside, plays it across to Kevin Lambert, who lets rip from distance. And of course, would it be a Lambert goal without the flip? I mean, it's the beautiful throw, the beautiful goal. I think that's just the theme. And then to end it off with the signature flip that everyone is talking about and landed him on the, uh, the USL team of the week. So credit him for the be uh, beautiful take. So 4-1 in the night on the end, three points for Rising to open the season. Only 38% possession on the night though, Edwin. What are your takeaways from this one? I mean, to start off with the possession, you mentioned it there, but for, for me, it's all about the quality of possession over the quantity. I mean, you can you can control the whole game with possession-wise, but it's what you do with the ball, and that's what Rising did well. They were creative in their attack. They were, they were able, the midfield played a huge role moving forward and defending very well. So, I mean, yes, that position is a little bit, uh, it, you want to control the possession more, but at the end of the day, they were, uh, they you created well with the ball. The midfield played ex extremely well. I mean, Ryan Flood from the wing back came up and had an exceptional game. Santi Moore uh, in the wing just, you know, was spectacular throughout the game. So it's all about what you can do with, with what you have. And they did just that. I mean, three shots for San Diego. It wasn't even enough if they, you know, if they just scored all of their shots to actually level that game. And in fact, only one on target as well, uh, which happened to go in. Rolls made one save, but, you know, at the end of the day, that one didn't count because it was offside. Was San Diego ever really in this game for you? 
No, I mean, you mentioned it a, a little bit, how the game kind of got close with the 2-1 scoreline, but I think anyone at the stadium you know, knew the reality of it. It was Rising's game with the control that they had over the game because, I mean, the defensive play uh, by all four were, were exceptional. I mean, in that goal itself, it was just beautiful uh, passes, the, just the right timing. I mean, the defense themselves thought it was a little bit offside. So, I mean, they're going to uh, argue against that. So just a tri uh, tremendous performance, not only from the defense, but the midfield. I mean, that midfield was exceptional cutting uh, cutting lanes and cutting possession throughout the game. So I think just uh, the defensive performance was stellar for Rising in this one. And yeah, Santi Moa in the end takes man of the match. You have both the fans and the media voting for him. You can't really argue with the decision. One goal, two assists from the Spaniard. Remember, of course, if you want to vote on that, make sure to look on Twitter after the game today. Look for the player ratings form and make sure to submit yours. But of course, he wasn't the only one to make an impression out there on the field on Friday night, with the entire trio in midfield making it onto the score sheet. Here's John Baccaro and what he thinks that says about Rising's midfield. Well, I think we we have, if not the best, one of the best midfielders, midfielders in the league. Uh, not only the three of us, but, you know, the guys who are behind us right now, they're, they keep pushing us and they make us better. And um, I think we just want to keep keep improving, uh, keep showing that we can do it in both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. And um, I think it was a great start for, for the three of us. And, um, and you know, we, we hope that we can win a lot more games together. So Bacara obviously hedging his bets a little bit there, you know, say they're one of one of the best midfields in the league. But how much of a, a claim do you think they could stake to being the best midfield in this league? I think if they keep up the performance of the last game, I think they're going to claim it. And they're going to be a huge reason why Ryan is successful this year. I think a lot of the games this year and, and maybe the whole season will be won through the midfield because, I mean, there was doubts in the preseason about the attack and what was happening. And a lot of it was the uh, creativity in the midfield and you need to join up in there in the creativity. And in this game in itself, we saw an attack waiting to uh, waiting for the midfield to get there and find it and get those passes to them who had the chances and space to take the shots. And so, I mean, his claim uh, might be a little bold. It's going to be a little bit of a soundboard for a lot of teams to hear right now, but it may be true. I mean, with, with, with the talent that they got there, Aiden Quinn, John Caro, and Lambert, they, all of them combined very well. All of them, uh, their skills uh, mesh, and it's going to be hard for any defenses and midfields to try to beat that midfield. So, I'm, I mean, a little bit of, of a big claim, but it, it could be true at the end of the day. Well, with Kevin Lambert obviously makes USL Championships Team of the Week this week. John Baccaro named to the bench on that team. The odd one out was Aidan Quinn, who, of course, also found the score sheet himself. Here's what Rick Shantz had to say about Aidan earlier this week. People talk about uh, all the time they use the metaphor that a player has an amazing engine. And um, when you watch Aiden, his, he, he covered... Um, I think a little over 10 kilometers in the game, but the, the, what's so impressive is the amount of uh, high speed actions. And so when he was closing down defenders, it was at a, a very, very high rate, you know, sometimes six, 6.5 meters per second. Um, that's not normal for somebody to be able to do that over 10 kilometers. That's a, a very, very high level of expectations on a midfielder. So, but I wasn't surprised because he does it every day. And this guy comes to work two hours earlier than everyone else. He's on the treatment table. He, he does preventative work. He takes care of his body nonstop. He is a true pro. Um, and uh, I'm, let's just put it this way. I'm glad. I know San Diego and everyone else in the league was bidding for him this offseason. And I am sure glad we won that bidding war. So Aiden Quinn, obviously one of the marquee signings for Rising this offseason. But how vital a piece do you think he could be in that midfield? I think he's going to be absolutely vital. And I think every team in the USL understands that because, I mean, it was a bidding war for a reason for a player of his quality. I mean, when you look at that last game and what he did, he, he was everywhere on the pitch, as uh, Chance mentioned. I mean, not only in the attack was he vital in creating the chances and, and you know, providing support, but defensively, I think his, his what he did won't pop on a stat sheet, but when you watch it itself, it's beautiful because he cut those lanes. He was there when the defense was chilling a little bit behind, he was the one who kind of caught up 
and slowed things down and was able to cut those chances and kind of force uh, force San Diego Loyal to pass it back. So his play is going to be absolutely, absolutely incredibly vital for the team because a team that in the last game we saw was pressing. He was one of those players who uh, played that press very well. So his play moving forward is going to be one to watch for. Yeah, if you look at the depth, obviously there's Jeremy Kelly who could fill in. Is If you wanted to move him forward from his current centre-back position, you've got James Moussa, who can also do a role in midfield. But someone we didn't see at all last game was, was Arturo Rodriguez. He was on the bench and unused substitute. But do you think that the youngster could actually you know, force his way into the first team plans? I, I think at the very least he's going to force some minutes late in the game because, as, uh, as we all know, this season's going to be a marathon, not a sprint. You're going to need good depth on the bench to come in and make impactful minutes and, and make uh, change the game up. And that's what Arturo Rodriguez can do. Because during the preseason, I think he's one of those highlights of it. I mean, the runs that he can do, the creativity he can bring. I mean, not only with his feet, but, I mean, just crossing the ball and able to drop back. I mean, not known necessarily for his defensive play, but he can, he can fulfill that role very well. So I think he's going to be an important depth piece. So when, you know, Lambert and, you know, Piquero, who play both well, uh, moving forward and defensively may be tired or even Aiden Quinn, he could step in and fill that role pretty well. Well, looking ahead now towards tonight's game, and you know, there's one face actually that longer standing rising fans might recognize on the other team, and that's Tyler Blackwood. He featured here in the desert during his, the last season of Arizona United, as they were then called. And here's what he had to say to me about his time in the desert earlier this week. You know, obviously, you played in, in Phoenix back when it was Arizona United. Mm. Not the first time you've been back, but, you know, what is it like returning to a, a city you used to play in? I love it. I've, I've got a good uh, record scoring against old teams as well. I scored at Phoenix in the playoffs. Uh, we lost that game, unfortunately, but that was it was still nice to watch Didier Drogba score on the same pitch as you. Um, but I have a good record and I have a good feeling as well. Um, and it's lovely, you know, it's... Phoenix was my first club um, in America, professional club, and I have great memories there and still talk to fans um, from there. And every time I go back, I get a really nice reception from the fans, which I, I appreciate a lot. Yeah, was there any memory from your playing days back there that, you know, sticks out? Uh, really, honestly, a lot of the time in, in football, um, when you kind of look back, a lot of the things that stand out are the, the friendships that you made um, on the team. And, you know, I, I've made, especially in Phoenix, I have like people that I played with that I, I'm still talking to every other day um, and really created strong bonds. Um, and on the field, I, I really enjoyed just the creative freedom I got in Phoenix and the whole um, TLC combination with me, Chris Cortez and Long Tan that we had. It was a fun time, so I really enjoyed it. I love that. I love that city. I love the area. It's, it was a great time. But you were there when they were playing in Peoria, weren't you? So <laughs> yeah. Did you ever was... expect, you know, that the club would would grow in the way that it did? I can tell you right now, I did not expect it because I had the contract offer um, for the following year, and you know we were we were training. Uh, out at a local park um, our, our locker room was an apartment like a literal apartment um, and we had to drive an hour for our games when there was you know fa our fans were back in Phoenix but we were playing out in Peoria so it, it was tough and I, I did enjoy my time there but I, I wanted you know you want that environment and there was no clue of that might be happening so I left and then very soon after it was like, oh, Didier Drogba's joined the team and uh, we have a stadium. I was like, okay, fair enough. But everything for a reason. Um, it would have been amazing to, you know, be there for that whole, the whole thing. But even better, I'm here for Oakland's um, rising, you know. Um, it's a very, feels very similar, that kind of first year growing pains, uh, still trying to figure out things like, you know, training ground and all this kind of stuff it's new it's, it's how it goes um i just spoke to someone earlier today that was with st louis when they went through their first um season so it's 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 tough to go through but it makes you stronger and it's beautiful to, to know that you you were part of that those first games this is going to be the first game on saturday that we've played and that's like one of our um, coaches chris said so that's history right there that's history and when we play at home that's history so um, I'm excited. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. So that was Tyler Blackwood talking about his time here in Phoenix playing for Arizona United. But looking to this weekend, of course, it's Oakland Roots' first game as a USL Championship team. And it's not without turbulence either. Oakland, you know, with a late change of coach, Jordan Farrell coming in as an interim coach just a couple of weeks ago. I asked Tyler if that late change caused any you know, negative impact on the boys. Here's what he said. Uh, honestly, um, I, I don't think it, it really has. Like, it's things weren't maybe working um, and then a change, people asked for a change and a change was made and then we, we're straight back to work. So um, there's no time for us to to sit and dwell on that. It's the season starting. So we just were straight, we never missed a day. So we were straight back to work and we're, we're focused on Phoenix. Well, Edwin, that late disruption, is that something you expect could play into this game? I think so. I think it's it kind of creates the unknown for the rising. Obviously, um, they, you know, they got their tapes, they got whatever. But, I mean, with the new manager comes new tactics and all that. And you're bringing in a new uh, – April 25th is when the last manager left. So it's going to bring something that is going to create a little bit of chaos in a sense because – you, you thought you knew this Oakland Ro- Roots team, and, I mean, you studied them pretty well. But now this, this first game, I think, is going to be truly a learning experience for them because as much as those preseason games can, t- uh, can tell you something, I mean, we learned from the rising sense that, that it could be a completely different ball game under low light. So that change in itself can, can, spark, uh, can spark a lot from the team. It, could, it can cause a new energy as well. So especially the manager that they got as the interior to come in, I think, is – is a, is a great change for them. So what actually do we know about Oakland Roots? Well, here's, the, here's the word from inside the rising camp. Um, well, it requires knowing a lot of people around the country and asking who's played them and who hasn't and trying to get filmed. So we were fortunate enough to get three different preseason games that they've played. Um, I've spoken to coaches and, and players from teams that they've played against. You know, we've done our homework. We've got an idea of what their shape is, how they like to build out. You know, they've got a, a 6'3 center forward that's very, very strong and powerful. They have three technical, very good midfielders. Uh, Akeem Ward is playing right back for them. He's extremely fast. Um, they, they love to play possession football. Max Horn still plays center back, who played for me in Tucson quite a few years ago. Um, the other center back, Tarek Morad, is, is played at San Diego and Louisville before that. So I, we know their players and we know their shape. Uh, so now the idea is to put a good game plan together and, and be prepared for the next match, much like we did against San Diego. It uh, doesn't matter what anyone thinks. It just matters what we bring to the table, you know. And um, we've, we've made a lot of changes since um, our last preseason game. We've made a lot of changes since we've had a coaching change. And everyone's um, buying in and it's a new philosophy, new formations, new positions, new tactics. So um, I don't think anyone's really ready for what we're going to bring. And um, I'm telling you, no one's going to want to play Oakland this year. Um, It's going to be, especially when we we open up at home, it's not going to be a place people want to come and they're going to have an easy game and get to, you know, walk all over us. No, it's going to be a war every time. And we have a bunch of soldiers, so I'm ready for that. Some new tactics. Certainly sounds as though things might have changed up there, but is that something that, from a rising perspective, you'd be concerned about? Not too much. I think you stick to the way that you play. I mean, as much as, you know, you want to know the way, the style to play and all that, you got to stick to what you do well. I mean, if you try to formulate everything around them, then you're, then the uh, the players are not going to be maybe comfortable with the, with the style of play and all that. So you got to truly stick with what you know and what you do well. So I think that's going to be very uh, very important for Rising and uh, as for Oakland, you, you let them play that they they do, but just cut them off. I mean, if it, they want to be possession based, you, you cut that possession as much as you can, and you just stick to what uh, stick to what you can what you can do well. Well, here's John Baccaro's take on that. I asked him, you know, is there concern that Rising could be caught off guard not knowing that much about Oakland? Well, that's our job, right? I think it's our, our job to uh, not let that happen, uh, to use our, our experience. I don't know how many uh, appearances in the USL combined we have as a club, as, a, as players, but 
Uh, we obviously have a, have experience in this league. We've proved that we can win, and you know every game's different. Uh, nothing's granted. We know that as players. We know that no team is going to come here and give us a win. We have to be at our best level every game if we want to be successful in this league. And um, it will be another challenge on Saturday, on Saturday, and hopefully we can get the three points. Well, there are things, of course, that we do know about Oakland Roots. So let's start with the man we've been hearing from, Tyler Blackwood up top. He's been up top at a fair few USL clubs over the past few years. But what should we expect from him? Uh, absolutely a name that should be known around these parts. I mean, he's he's a he's just a, he's a goal scorer. At the end of the day, that's what he does and what he can offer the team. Someone who's known for having that bit of pace that, that can challenge your defense and have that energy. So, I mean, if, if you're rising, what, what you're aware with him is what he can do in front of the net and not give him, uh, not give him the space and time to create the chances and make him uncomfortable. Because if you do, teams have paid in the past. And I mean, and he, he knows how to take advantage of those, especially against his former teams, which he knows how, how to score against. Well, in the midfield, there's a, there's a local boy from not far off of Oakland, but one who's been playing across to our east here. He's been out in New Mexico. What do we know about Sally Mohammed? I mean, it, it was their first signing when they came up to USL Championship. It's someone that they highly coveted, and he's, he, has, he has a great defensive mind. I mean, it's someone that can truly transform, uh, transform a game the way he can control that midfield because uh, he truly tries to uh, take it over and make it uh, make it his, his own. He does have a little bit of uh, injury past, so those kind of issues have, have came up. But when he's fully healthy, healthy, he makes every appearance he can on the team, and he's truly can, can change the game. And he's uh, capable of making spectacular plays. When you look up the name, there's quite a few – there's a uh, there's a goal that comes to mind that just truly tr- is truly amazing. So just be careful if you give him uh, give him a chance from far, he, he's willing to take it. And then you know at the back you've got a very experienced central defender and former USL Cup winner in Tarek Morad. What do you think we'll see from him tonight? Someone who's very comfortable with the ball. I mean, when you when you have that defense, um, what Rising did so well in that last game is press. I mean, that, that San Diego loyal team was very uncomfortable with the ball back there. They created turnovers. Rising got the balls at uh, oppor- opportunistic kind of parts of the field in that final third of the attack. But Terry Morin, he's someone who, when he has the ball, he's willing to play with it. He's, he's comfortable. He's aware with, of his surroundings. He can win the ball in the air. He, he's going to take away that aerial threat uh, by man marking people in, in, in the free kicks and all that. So he's going to be a, a defensive player that's going to make his presence known. But physicality-wise, he's not the most physical defender. So that's something that Rising may take advantage of at this in this game. Is there anybody else, really, that you, you know, know on their team? I mean, there's one player I think that stands out and everyone talks about, and it's going to be maybe their most important player all year long is going to be Wall Fall. I mean, during his time in, in the championship, every every team he's been a part of, has made it to the playoffs. It's not only because of the teams, but also his spectacular play. He's, he's known for not only uh, having that, u- using his motor and everything, but he's more known for ha- being smart with it. He knows when to make a run and when not to. There's times during the game where you'll see him walk and you're like, why is that player just kind of moving around slowly? He knows what he's doing. He's timing his run very well. He has great vision. The, the way that he can switch the ball is going to be something worth watching. The long balls are going to be uh, great from him. He knows where to place them and at the right time to do it. But he's also capable of taking free kicks and scoring. So he's a player that's going to truly lead this team in the midfield. So it's going to be a great midfield battle for Rising. So what are you expecting score-wise tonight then? It's going to be an interesting one. I mean, this Oakland team is wants uh, kind of possession base. They, they know how to play with the ball and everything. But Rising's fine. Not in possession. That's what we learned the last game we mentioned already. So knowing from what we know from Oakland, they they love they love to ask a lot of their center backs, build from the back and all that. It but rising took advantage and press and did so well. So I think rising are gonna kind of play in a similar fashion, maybe not not score as many goals. I mean, that was unexpected, I think, from anyone uh to win four one. So I'm gonna go rising to secure the victory, but I think it's gonna be more of a close game. Three to one. I think that the Oakland's going to create chaos with the unknown that we talked about, but Rising should be able to take home uh, take home the victory.
you're not going for an absolutely storming victory then no no i think it's just there's there's a little bit of the unknown you know i think that uh, the new manager Farrell, i mean what he can do and what he brings to the team he's he has he has experience he knows what he's uh, he truly asked for this team he loves athleticism and all that so i just think that just a little bit of the unknown and that chaos is going to make it a tighter game of course, after saying that, I think, hang on a minute, you went 3-1 as much as you were hedging your bets. So <laughs> perhaps how spoiled we are here watching Rising that, you know, we look at 3-1 and think, oh, it's not completely dominant. But anyway, I think that brings us to a close here. Edwin, thank you for joining me. And remember, those of you at home, that tonight's game kicks off at 7.30, not 7 like last week. Edwin, you might need that reminder as well. To all of you at home, enjoy the match. Goodbye.